Hey, this is Malcolm341. In this video, we're going to look at some Maya tricks and secrets. So today we're going to look at open the color picker with a hotkey and save color palettes, make channel box sliders more sensitive for precision modeling edits, and how to delete empty groups to clean up your scene. So let's get into it. Okay, so first up, we've got the uh, hotkey color picker uh, secret magic trick. Uh, so basically, what we've got here is I've got just a sphere. And I've got its material open here, which is just a regular old blend, and it's got a red color. And so first of all, let's just make sure that everyone knows if you click the color here, it brings up this thing, and you can change the color, do whatever you want here, kind of a standard color picker. But what you might not know is if you actually double click this space, it's going to bring up the color picker. So if you double click this, you'll get this guy, which is a completely different tool to do similar stuff, but it's kind of more advanced. And it also comes with this palette thing down here, which can be super handy. I'm just going to close that down. So the hotkey to bring up the color picker, you can double click whatever the color there to get it that way. Or you can hit Control P on the keyboard. So press Control P and boom, there you go. You get the same color picker thing that comes up there. Now, one thing to watch out for, though, is when you press Control P, this just brings up the regular old color picker, it doesn't bring up the color picker that's linked to this material. So see if I change the color here, nothing happens. This is kind of a standalone color picker, and I'll show you what that's used for. So what's cool about this one and the other one too is what you can do in here is you can actually create your own palette down here and then you can save it. So what you do is you make a color that you want, let's say whatever, some kind of funky green yellow just so we can kind of see it. And then once you've made a color up here, down here, if you left click, that will select the color. Actually, I just erased my color that I was making there. But if you make a color here, we'll just make that weird funky color, yellow, greeny thing again. If you make the color there and you right click, it will actually replace any one of these little squares. So anytime that you do a color that you want to remember and save it, you can even go like, oh, I want to sample this color. It becomes the color history, current color, whatever. And then you right click here and you can save it down here. And then what you do with that is you click on the save and then you give it a name and give it a place here. I'll just put it on the desktop. So we'll just call this whatever YouTube, save it. And then I'm just going to close down Maya, close that guy down. There's the desktop. And then I'm going to launch Maya again. Just go to my programs here. Where's my, my 2018? Launch that. Wait 400 hours for that to load. OK, and we're back in Maya with a fresh scene. And so what's really cool about this is if you press Control P, bring up the color picker, and then you can go down to load. And we save that to the desktop and just load up the uh, profile that we saved. And then there's all your custom colors right there. So you can use that to do uh, numerous different things, uh, color all types of different things, work colors, whatever, materials, whatever you want. Just going to close that one down there. And then just going to double click this guy. Whoops, double click. There we go. And then see, I can choose my custom colors here that I saved from a previous Maya session. So if you want to do some specific colors, there's the background color that I changed or whatever. You can save and load it through here and access it through different parts of the Maya interface. What I actually use this for quite a bit is when I do the icons for the uh, Maya shelf, the background color and the uh, color behind the text, all the colors for these icons, I store those in one of those saved color palettes. And then I bring it up every time I have to make a new icon so I don't have to remember what all the colors are. So pretty cool. Use that and save yourself some time. OK, next up, we've got the uh, make the channel box sliders more sensitive. So that can be super helpful. I pretty much use it in that mode almost all the time. So I've just got a sphere here that I created. It still has history on it or whatever. So one cool trick is if you select anything in the channel box here on the side, one of these values, let's say whatever, scale Y, and then your mouse is over here or anyone else, if you hold down middle mouse and you drag left and right, sorry, up and down, you can control that value in the channel box inside of the viewport. So if you wanted to scale all these, I can just select that, hold shift to select them all, and then scale left and right to actually do its scale without even needing to go over there. So that can be handy for like, you know, doing like a precision kind of thing. I use this quite a bit if you want to just like move something around like that or whatever. So where this can be really handy is actually with the extrude tool and a lot of the different modeling tools. So I'm just going to select some like random faces here. I'm just going to hold down tab and just do a paint select just so we can get an extrusion. Grab those faces. 
I'm going to press hold shift and hold right click to bring this menu up and then I'm going to select extrude faces. And so what I really like is doing that trick we did from the channel box in these kind of tool histories or whatever. So if I just middle mouse drag left and right, see, look, I don't even have to go over here. I'm, I'm anywhere on the screen and I can do my extrusion there. And then the issue with this is this is great, but when you're doing like something really, like really precise and you come in here, even moving it one pixel, you can see how it's popping. Even moving it one pixel, it's way too sensitive. Like you might want to do like a little tiny extrusion and oh, it missed it. Like, see, that's the smallest increment I can get there. It's like way too choppy. So what you do is you hold control and shift and middle mouse all at the same time and then you drag. And then look at this, look how nice and precise it is. No more chopping, look how smooth that is, it's perfect. So you can do some awesome precision modeling edits uh, with no issues. On top of that, there's this little weird little button here. This is the basically the, the pi or whatever. The more pi that is blue, the faster that this thing scrolls. So, oh my God, look how fast it is now because I made it like super fast. So basically what you wanna do, what I always do is I always set that to the slowest, or sorry, the smallest piece of pi and then see it gets a lot better. So you can use the shift trick and see here the shift, look how precise it is now. It's like super precise. So basically you can override that and that can be the default value and that can be the default value with the control shift trick. And then you can also modify it further from there. And that same pi icon, speed icon thing can be accessed in the channel box. It's just right here. It controls the same value, but you can get to it here if you prefer. Okay, and finally, we have the delete empty groups, which can be super helpful. So I don't know if this ever happens to you, but you might be like, whatever, doing some modeling, making some cool stuff. And then you will go over to Windows and open up the Outliner. And then you'll see all this crap. You'll have all these nulls and just random empty groups and just all this junk in your scene. And it's just like hideous and your whole scene looks disgusting. And there's actually a built-in tool in Maya to clean all that up, but it's in a super weird, super secret place. So let's check it out. You go up into File and then you go into the optimized scene size and you don't want to click this actually never click this you want to click the little options box so it brings open this window and the reason you don't want to click that is if you hit apply or you click it there it applies anything that has a tick box beside it i'm just going to go here and reset this so basically what you want to do it doesn't actually matter about these tick boxes i recommend only clicking these optimize now so you don't accidentally delete something from your scene this thing's super confusing basically if you hit apply anything that has a tick box gets optimized. If you hit optimize now, just that one thing gets optimized and it doesn't even matter if the tick box is on or off. Super confusing UI. So what you want to do to clean the scene is it's actually kind of even hidden within this hidden menu. Basically, you're looking for transforms, unused transforms, because Maya doesn't really know what a group is. It just thinks it's like a parent. And so if it doesn't have anything in it, there's no geometry or anything going on inside, then you can use this optimize now button empty transforms. So let's go ahead and click the magic button. So click it and sure, it's gonna give you this warning, say okay, and boom, there we go. So nothing left in the scene, none of that junk anymore, just got the geometry that I had there before. So super handy. But what's really lame about this tool is you can't make a shelf button for this. I've tried multiple times, these buttons won't go, like there's no way to just get that great feature, delete empty transforms and put it on a shelf. So um, I'm gonna try to figure out to see if I can write a script to do that because this thing is pretty cool, but uh, it's super annoying having to go like every time, like there's no way to like shortcut this. File, optimize scene size, options box, empty transforms, blah, blah, blah. So whatever, I'll take a look and see if I can figure out how to make something just as good that we can have as a button up here. Thanks a lot for watching this video. Without viewers like you, this channel wouldn't exist. If you like this video and enjoy the channel, please support me by purchasing something from the online store. Each purchase goes towards creating more video content and keeps the channel ad-free. See you next time. Have a delightful day.